Okay, hopefully at some point you have learned Pythagorean theorem. It's one of the most important formulas for all of geometry. Specifically, when we have right triangles, that's the one we're gonna use for any sort of distance. So it is in that reference chart that's given to you on the SAT, but you've probably learned it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what that refers to is that the a and the b represent the legs of a right triangle and C is the hypotenuse. So look, notice they're using those exact same words, right? We have legs and they want the hypotenuse. So they're giving us that A is 28, B is 20, and then C is some mystery, so that's what we're solving for. So this is literally just about plugging things into the right places. Uh, remember though, with right triangles, it actually doesn't actually matter which leg we think of as the A and which one we think of as the B. It's all the same, it doesn't matter. So that's just a, a convention. But the C does matter, right? The C is the hypotenuse that always has to be the side that is opposite the right angle. The longest side of a right triangle is by definition the hypotenuse, the C in Pythagorean theorem. So that's always the thing people mess up. So just be careful, sometimes they give us the hypotenuse and they make us solve backwards for a leg. Here it's more straightforward. So let's just plug in 28 squared plus 20 squared is equal to C squared. Let's do a little germ das here. And when we do it, first we're gonna do arithmetic. So we're gonna go through it forward. So there's no groups, but there is some exponents and radicals. So that's step one here is let's simplify that. So 28 squared, I would just do this in my calculator, is 784. 20 squared is 400, and that's equal to c squared. Now there's no multiplication or division, so that goes away, but there is addition or subtraction, right? I can add 784 and 400. So 784 plus 400 is 1184. Okay, now arithmetic stops. We can't go any further, right? We don't have what c is equal to, but we also can't simplify things any further. So this is where algebra takes over. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get c alone. And we're gonna do that by kind of just canceling out whatever's attached to it. So luckily, this is a very simple equation. It has, the C does not have any addition or subtraction. There's nothing else on that side. It has no multiplication or division, but it does have uh, exponents and radicals. So the reason we think of germdas in kind of pairs is that the pairs tell us what to do when we wanna do algebra and get rid of something. So we have a square that's an exponent, and so the opposite of an exponent is a radical. So we're gonna take a square root to get rid of the square. So that gets rid of the C, uh, the C squared part, leaves us with just a regular old C. And then I'm gonna put this in my calculator. In fact, let me do it in Desmos so you can see. I'm gonna do the square root right here of 1184, and it's a messy number, 34.409. Now what am I gonna do? Because I don't have that kind of answer in my answer choices. I know it's not 48, and I know it's not 1184, but notice where that choice came from, right? They, they hoped we forgot that last algebra step, and I, I know students who do that all the time. Um, but now, like, how are we gonna know? Eight root six, four root 74? Well, we could do this a much more kind of algebraic way and simplify the radical, basically finding perfect squares and pulling things out. I, uh, it's kind of a pain. Let's not do it if we don't have to. And especially if you're in eighth or ninth grade, you might not have learned this yet. So how are we gonna do it without it? Well, we're gonna let the calculator handle it. So let's just take choice A and just type what it says, eight times the square root of six. Now look, that gives us a decimal, but it gives us a messy decimal that is not the same messy decimal that we had before, right? Radical 1184 was 34.4. This is 19.59, right? So let's do uh, choice B four times the square root of 74. And if I put that in notice, that is the exact same decimal as I wanted. So now I know that B is the answer. And, and that's fine. You know, there are ways to simplify radicals and, and understand why four root 74 is like this simplified answer, but it, it, it's not worth your time. Right now, just focus on getting most questions right. You'll learn this stuff over the next couple of years. And then, yeah, you, you might be able to do it. But even if you did know how to do it, you have learned it. Why bother? It, it's, it's adding potential for mistakes, right? I mean, it, simplifying radicals is not an automatic thing, especially when the number is really, really big, like a 1,184. So don't open the door to a potential careless mistake. The calculator can handle it as long as you're entering things just correctly in the calculator. Just let the calculator tell you which decimals are equivalent to each other. Much, much easier. But regardless, I would say the big thing to take away here, besides the simplifying radicals, is knowing how Pythagorean theorem works and understanding the difference between arithmetic and algebra. When we're simplifying one side of an equation, that's arithmetic. When we're simplifying by moving things across 
um, an equal sign, that's algebra, and the process is slightly different. Either way, we're gonna use germdas, but the direction that we're moving through germdas changes. Uh, basically, algebra is arithmetic in reverse, so we've gotta go backwards through it, and that might matter more when we have more steps for that algebra, more complicated stuff to work with.